Hey guys, and welcome back to your Fluid Health and Fitness Design to Move series on knee pain and quad dominance. My name is Ryan. And I'm Hunter. Today we're going to talk to you about a common muscle distortion pattern called quad dominance. A lot of times if you're a runner or if you engage in lots of endurance-based activities, you're going to put a lot of pressure onto the front musculature of your hip, and this can lead to a movement distortion or a muscle distortion pattern called quad dominance. Remember, each week we post a blog and produce a video on a common muscle or movement distortion pattern. Our goal is to help educate everyone on how they can be proactive about managing their own biomechanics and movement quality. So make sure to follow us on our blog series on our website at fluidhealthandfitness.com. The link is in the description below. So in order to get to the video, you're going to need a few pieces of equipment. I've got a fascia release ball here, our fluid fascia release ball. Hunter's got an exercise band that we're going to anchor on the wall to help with the distraction technique for your hips. You're also going to need an exercise band for your knees, and that's going to be for our activation. Now, if you don't have that equipment, don't fret. We do have it listed on a hyperlink in our shop on our website, or otherwise you can make do with what you got at home. Just make sure to go through the process. If you like the videos, make sure to like and share so that we can get all the love from your friends and family and you can pass on all the goodness that we're going to share with you today. Let's get right to it. So Ryan, what are we going to talk about today? So we're going to talk about knee pain and what causes knee pain. Okay. And the truth of it is, a lot of times we overuse certain muscles which distort the way that our joints are held in the position that they maintain. And when that goes on, we start to create what's called impingement on the nerve endings, which we associate as pain. Okay. Now, oftentimes, we overuse certain muscles in our day-to-day -day activities that create distortion at the knee and in the hip. That w and these are the two points where they attach, right? Okay. Those are your quads. Now, they help with extending the knee, mm -hmm. right? They straighten the knee out, and they lift the hip up into flexion. Yeah. So quad dominance is something that affects a lot of people, leads to a lot of altered movement, and by extension, a lot of injury cycles. So we're going to use our Design to Move series, and we focus on basically five different elements. First, we want to reduce the pressure in that muscle by employing a soft tissue release technique called active release. We'll show you how to do that. As soon as you've gotten these muscles to basically comply, we're going to show you how to lengthen them and get more extension out of them so that the joints start to move the way they're supposed to by using a neuromuscular stretching protocol. Gotcha. As soon as we're done with that, we're going to activate the traditionally underactive muscles, the gluteals, mm -hmm. right, and get those things to fire up. I'll be able to feel my butt afterwards. Feel your butt. Sweet. Now remember, your butt holds your pelvis. So it keeps it nice and stable, and by extension, maybe your back will feel a little bit better. All right, sweet. Looking Thank forward you. to that. Yeah, right? And then afterwards, we're going to integrate it into a basic movement. Then we're going to put it all together and then strengthen the whole complex by going down into a single leg hip press. Okay. Cool? Awesome. So all along, it's going to take about 10 minutes. Make sure to take out your notepad if you have questions, or feel free to reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. we love to hear from you. Let's get right to it. So now we're going to get to talk about active release. What's that about? So active release is basically a soft tissue technique that basically teaches your muscles to pull the fascial adhesions or the buildup of this junk that coats them through a tension point, which we're going to use this ball for, to help break and open those collagenous cross bindings okay. and get your muscle fibers to lengthen. Awesome. Okay, we're going to need a ball and we're going to need to get on a mat. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to first start with our active release technique, which is basically using the pressure of this ball, the surface area, to apply pressure to your quad, and then you're going to articulate or move the joint mm -hmm. so that the tissue will actually flow through the pressure of that ball. Okay. Okay. Now, the goal is actually to obstruct it as you bend the knee to get the fibers of your muscle to pull through and elongate while holding that tissue there. So there needs to be enough surface area to hold that adhesive tissue so that it doesn't roll it around or roll around it. We want to brace it and hold it so that we can pull those fibers away from the adhesive tissue. So again, a ball with the right diameter could be sufficient and a lot of times that may not be broad enough so you could use a foam roller in lieu of. So just be aware of that before you get started. Remember, the first muscle we're going to really work on is the rectus femoris. It's the one right up the front. So I'm going to go up about two or three inches into the belly of the muscle where I'm going to be right above the kneecap, and then I'm going to find the most tender spot. So go ahead and put that there. Now we don't want to, again, go too hard, too fast, because the muscles will contract and they'll guard, and it's going to be hard for you to be able to go through the position. But what you'll notice, Hunter's on his right side. His weight is basically bearing down, and he's actually or compressing the muscle between the, the head of the ball 
in the femur itself, and he's going to hold it there to try to get a release in the muscle fibers to start. So he's not moving around, but do you feel it, Hunter? Yeah. Yeah, and so he's going to support his back by engaging his abdominals so that he keeps the anchor point at his pelvis where that rectus femoris attaches to. Once he's gone through for about 30 seconds, he's going to start to bend the knee and start that flossing. Now he's going to start bending the knee very slowly, making sure that that adhesion doesn't roll around the apex of the ball. So I'm going to keep the toe down, down. right, pointed inward, and I'm going to bring my knee up. And you're going to start bending it up slowly, making sure that the adhesion doesn't go through it. So you only want, only want to bend it to the point where you start feeling that tissue start to glide to the apex of the ball. Do you feel that? Yep. That's why we're going to be just underneath of it with the ball closer to the kneecap. And as you bend the knee, it's going to pull that tissue bed underneath of it and come right up to that block, hopefully with the ball. You want to breathe out as you bend the knee, and you're going to do it about four or five times, slowly up, and then let it go down controlled. And as you let it go down, try to let go of the muscle tension and see if you can sink in deeper because the muscles are now starting to relax. Now we can get deeper into the tissue itself. Got it. Okay, you hit it about three or four times before we go right into our stretch. A lot of times when our muscles are too tight, it impacts the actual movement of the head of the bone and the socket of the joint. Mm -hmm. And the quads are no different. So when we have tension in our quads, it has a tendency to pull our pelvis down, and because of which that femur head gets pulled deep into the socket. Got it. I want to unload that, and that's what's, what we use this for. It's called a distraction technique. Okay. It's going to help to get more length out of the muscles that we're trying to stretch. Okay. You ready to start? Let's do it. All right, let's go. If you guys don't have this fancy setup, what you can do is put that band underneath maybe a couch, something heavy enough that it's going to support the weight of a fairly heavy band. Mm -hmm. This is probably about 30 pounds of pressure. So grab that band. Okay. You're going to wrap it around the leg that we're going to be stretching. Now this would hopefully be the leg that you just rolled on if you're doing it the right way. We're going to make sure that that band is right under your butt, right under the gluteal fold, right? Now here's what you normally see people do when they do their quad stretch. You're going to see them arch really low into the back and push their hips forward. That's actually moving the pelvis in the spine. It's not actually anchoring the pelvis so that you can get a deeper stretch out of that quad muscle. So what he's going to do is he's going to pull his pelvis under by flexing his butt and flexing his abdominals. And when he does that, what do you feel, Hunter? Uh, I feel a little kind of tight pressure right here, kind of pulling it forward. This feels like it's almost like stretching and pulling at the hip. Yep. So. While getting the rectus and these other quad muscles, it's also going to get into the psoas and iliacus. But what we're working on is the quad muscles. So there's two ways to increase the stretch. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we can posteriorly tilt more through our pelvis by breathing out and actively engage our abs. Or we can lift this knee up or this foot up to create a deeper knee bend. Now, you feel that a little bit more yep. down into the quad portion? Yep. Now what we want to do is make sure that one, we protect the knee, that's a lot of pressure on the kneecap, but two, that if we bend the knee, we don't see a lateral or external rotation in the femur or a dissociation or an altered movement in the hip line. So we don't want the hip to turn in or down or have the femur rotate out because again, all we're doing is moving the joint, we're not stretching the muscle. Okay? So we make this a neuromuscular stretch by flexing the muscle that we're trying to relax. So he's getting that quad under a lot of tension. Now he's going to flex his foot into the ground. And by doing that, he's going to flex the muscle that we're stretching. Now this is going to create basically an overload on the ner nervous system so that when we relax that tension after he's done flexing, the muscle's going to relax. He's going to be able to get deeper into the stretch. So now he's going to let it relax for two seconds. We just held it for about six to ten seconds under flexion. Now he's going to flex his butt. He's going to breathe out, flex his abs. And then he's going to feed through his opposite knee by bending his knee and dorsiflexing the ankle. It's going to create a tighter stretch in the quad that we're stretching here on the right side. And you feel that? I do, yep. Yep. So we can go through breathing patterns and then just kind of ease into it, breathe out, sink in, get a little bit deeper, go through about three or four of those until we get more range of motion, and then go back right into flexing. So flex it down. He's pushing his foot into the ground, flexing the knee. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. And again, breathe out and lean in and sit forward. There it is, guys. So you can do that for three cycles of that PNF or neuromuscular stretching where you flex it for six, relax it for two, and then again, stretch it deeper again for 10 seconds. Make sure that when you get up, you protect yourself. Your knee is under a lot of pressure. You don't want to just get up violently and don't want to sling yourself or slingshot yourself into the wall or couch or wherever you've anchored your body to. Yeah. When you're done, you should feel pretty good, right? Yeah, it feels good. So bend the knee, see how the hip feels.
feels good. Feel, feel pretty like solid. Feel like more mobility in it. And yep. Now that we're done with our PNF stretch or our neuromuscular stretch, we want to go into the activation of the glutes or the booty. The booty. Bring it on. All right. Let's do, do it. it. So, Ryan, what's this whole band thing about? So, we use this basically as a dynamic pressure or tension to put around our hips so that we can go down into an activation of our gluteals. Now what most people do is they know that the butt pulls the leg behind into, into extension, but they don't realize that they need to co-contract the flexors on the opposite hemisphere of the pelvis so they can get a stronger impulse out of that glute. By using this band in a side-lying hip extension position, it's going to really help you to activate and turn on your butt in the right way and in the right sequence while co-contracting the hip flexor. Got it. We're going to get down on the ground and get to it. Okay, sweet. All right. Now once you've gotten the stretch of the muscle, we want to activate your butt and your gluteals and, and especially your glute maximus. Oftentimes our body will over recruit the glute medius, which okay. is an external rotator of the femur as well mm -hmm. and internal in different angles of the femur action. But bottom line is we want to really engage all three heads of your glutes, your glute max, med, and min. Okay. In order to do that, we're going to use this exercise band um, and he's going to wrap that around his knee and then Hunter, I need you to lay on your side and we're gonna work on the same side that you just released, and that one's gonna be up. So I release my right, I'm gonna lay on my left. You got it. Okay. okay, so what we're gonna do is first get into the position so that he's able to maintain a neutral position in his hips. That basically means that his pelvis shouldn't be swaying back and forth. If this muscle is so tight that as he extends his leg back using the gluteals that we're trying to fire, and it pulls the pelvis anteriorly down, his lower back is going to start to arch. Yeah, I can already feel that. Yep. Yeah. And then we're no longer using your glute. We're actually using our lower back musculature, and that is what really leads to that back pain we talked about, right? Got so we got to make sure that the pelvis stays stable to start. Got it. So what I want him to do is set up his body so that everything is somewhat neutral. His chin's tucked. His nose is in line with his sternum, so his head's right on straight. Right? Now he's going to take his right hand, and he's going to brace his left knee. That's going to lock his pelvis in the right position so we can get a nice strong anchor point for his glute to fire off of resisting against this band tension, okay? So now that we're set up, hopefully you guys are all set up too, he's gonna extend his leg behind, bringing his kneecap behind him, and as he's doing this, he's gonna make note that his pelvis doesn't start to turn. So the front of his hip and the back of his hip should stay at a natural 10 degree arc and no greater than that. Now show him what it looks like if you go too far. The back starts to arch, the knee starts to rotate out, the toe will rotate up to the ceiling, all of which are compensation patterns, and we're not gonna fully engage all three of those glutes. So what I wanna do is make sure, again, abs are tight, he's gonna kick his leg back, and he's gonna keep his toe downwardly rotated and his knee neutral with his leg under his hip line. Okay, he's gonna go back, breathe out to a count of four, and then breathe in and slowly come back to the tension of the band, goes back to a nice, nice soft tension. And then he's gonna go back, breathe out, kick it back. As he breathes out, he's contracting his abdominals, he's holding his pelvis in a neutral alignment, and again, he's getting a nice strong anchor point. So you feel that in the glute? Yeah. Oh yeah. Right oh yeah. yeah. So your obliques are holding your abdominals and they're fighting against the tone of the quad. And again, that's what we're gonna do to reformat, again, these tension relationships between the glute, the quads, and the abdominals, all to hold the legs stable. And again, increase your quality of life so you don't feel it in the lower back and or the knee. You want to do it until you basically fatigue your type 1 muscles, mm -hmm. which are your slow twitch muscles that help to stabilize the hip, right? Okay. Stabilize the femur. And that's normally going to take about 20 repetitions. Now, again, if you start to deviate from a, a nice clean path of motion, meaning, again, the knee starts to rotate up, the knee starts to buckle, and you start bending the knee, you start rotating the toe up, or the hip starts to rotate out like this, you got to stop. Okay? It may mean that you can only do 45 seconds, maybe it's a minute, maybe it's a minute and a half, but you, what you don't want to do is move incorrectly and then teach your muscles that are meant to stabilize you to stabilize you in the wrong position. Okay. That's actually going to do the exact opposite of what we're trying to accomplish and again conditioning your uh, nervous system and then maintaining proper biomechanics and form. Okay. Goal here is to isolate the pelvis and not to move through the hip, right? The leg will move in the joint itself and the pelvis will stay stationary because I'm engaging my abdominals. If I start to move into the lower back and go further than my range of motion can accommodate, we actually set up compensation patterns. That again is gonna lead up the kinetic chain into the shoulders, 
right, into the neck, and then down the kinetic chain into the knee. And again, today's topic is on pain reduction in the knee. So let's make sure that we use the muscles responsible for stabilizing the femur so we don't have so much shearing force down at the knee. And again, having to rely on the quads to help stabilize the kneecap as well. Got it. Okay, so as soon as you're done with that, we're gonna go into stability or balance work so we can teach the nervous system how to make this work when we're in our everyday activities like running and gait and all that good stuff. Okay. You ready to get started? Let's do it. All right, let's get up. So, how does your hip feel right now? Feels good. It feels like, you know, my hip feels looser, my quads are, you know, lengthened. I feel like my butt's, you know, firing like. You can actually like, feel it? Yeah, like it's not asleep anymore. Great. Okay, so now that we've done that, we got to teach your body how to move through a normal range of motion. Okay. So what people don't realize is that you can condition your nervous system to create a new pattern or almost like blueprint of how these muscles are supposed to fire in, a right, in the right sequence. Okay. Now, in order to do that, we have to challenge your balance. Okay, so we're going to do a single leg balance, which is going to basically replicate the ascension phase or the loaded phase of gait, right? Now to do that, what we're going to do is have you take off your shoe because we don't want to rely on the structures of the shoe to do any of the heavy lifting. Okay. We want to make your muscles do the work. Got it. Okay, I'm also going to have him stand on a line so that his foot is right adjacent to that line so he can see if there's any deviation or if the foot's going to rotate out or if the ankle's going to roll in. He can use that as a landmark basically to look at the relationships. Okay, perfect. Cool. So bottom line is we want to try to move through the ankle, knee, and hip without seeing the foot flatten in, right, like this. Mm -hmm. The ankle roll in, the knee drive into the center of the body, like yeah. valgus, like that, yeah. or have the hip rotate out to the side or hike up. Okay. All of these are common compensations. We're trying to go to the point of seeing those things happen. Got it. Okay, so he's going to balance on one leg, bring his other leg up into flexion, and then as he sinks, he's going to bend down at the ankle, let his knee travel to his tips of his toe, and then again push his hip back behind him. Now, if you notice in Hunter, his right and left hip line or hip bones are parallel to the ground, perpendicular to his femur, and his kneecap is traveling right over his second toe, and he's not letting his no knee go back past his knee, or excuse me, his knee past his toe. He's coming all the way back up to the top and doing a hip extension, and now he's wanting to feel the engagement of his glute to hold his pelvis as he sits back into it. Now he's going to push through his heel and push his hip forward, going through full knee extension to get his glute to fire at the top. Now again, the money is made by putting yourself to the point of your threshold for balance, meaning he's going to go as far as he can go until that joint starts to deviate from its natural alignment. Okay, so show him what it looks like when it's wrong. Get deep. See how the knee drops in. The toe or the ankle will roll in with it. This is called valgus. It's going to be a flattening of the foot and an inward rotation of the femur, and that's going to stretch his glute. If his glute isn't strong enough, it's not going to catch that from happening. So now let's contain it and go back down in. So if you guys see any variation of that while you're doing it, and you don't want to go any further, the point of this exercise is to teach your nervous system how to make these systems work in the right alignment, sure. right? Yeah, it makes sense. In the right recruitment patterns. Yeah. So if we're doing it wrong, we're actually teaching it to do it the wrong way, and that makes it a reflexive thing in our brain. We want to get to the point where we can do this thing without having to even think about it. So again, make sure that you try to go about two minutes or about 20 repetitions, right? If I do a nice slow four second down, I'm gonna hold it for two seconds, come all the way up, and make sure that that motion goes through the, or that movement goes through the full range of motion. Yeah. Get the hip under you, engage your abdominals at the top. Got it. Got it? Yeah. Now let's overload the complex so that we can make sure that we set it in stone by getting that glute to get fatigued. Perfect. Cool? Yeah, so you think we just released the overactive, right? We've just targeted and activated the glute. Mm -hmm. We're doing a single leg balance, right? And now we want to put the muscle under a lot of load. Okay. So now the nervous system's firing up, everything's coordinated. Now let's put it into a position where we can overload it and get it stronger. It. So we're going to use this in a laying position and do a single leg hip press. Okay. You got to put it around the knees and then we're going to lay down. All right. You ready to get started? Let's do it. All right. So if your butt wasn't tired enough already, we're going to go in and overload it with a variation of a single leg hip press. Now we're going to bring this exercise band back into it okay. and we're using that for dynamic tension. But additionally, we're trying to 
actually get your extensors and your flexors on the opposite hemisphere of the pelvis to work concurrently. Okay. So just like gait, when we were talking about the leg going up and down, one muscle on the back of the hip is going to have to fire when the opposite side of the body's flexors are going to have to fire. Got it. So we're going to use that band to basically create that cross tension. Okay. Okay. So in order to do that, we're going to have you lay down and wrap your knees again. Now, if you guys don't have the band at home, do this without it. But again, you can purchase one of these things on our website. If you go online, just go ahead and look for it. It'll probably be included in the description below while you're doing this video. But either way, try to come along for the ride, even if you don't have the band. Okay. So main thing, once again, anytime we get into a position, we want to make sure that everything that shouldn't be moving doesn't. So we want to maintain neutral through the core, the torso, and the neck. So he's going to flex his neck down, keep his head centered. Shoulders are drawn down and back, so his shoulder blades are nice and flat. He's getting all the air out of his ribs so he can keep his lower back in contact with the ground, engage his core, right? Abdominals are firing. Now he's going to push through the same leg that we just have been working on, and he's going to lift his opposite leg into flexion before he starts to move. Okay, so go ahead and move your leg first. So he's going to lift his leg up, create flexion in the left hip, creating some tension on that band. His knees are going to track inside of his hip line so that they don't rotate out. And then he's going to push through his heel and lift his butt up as he breathes in. So he's going to breathe in, push up, and then come down together to a count of four slowly. Now the goal here is to use what? The hamstring or the glute? The glute. Glute. Now, again, you're going to naturally feel the hamstring engaged because a lot of times compensatorily, if your quads are tight, your hams are tight too. So we want to try our best to keep the contracture in the butt as we lift up. Got it. Okay, so that's your mission. Okay. That's your mission. So lift that knee up, pull it into flexion, hold it there, keep the tension on the line, and then lift up through the butt. You'll notice that he's not getting very high, right? No. If he goes farther than that, his hip line is going to alter and he's going to start using his lower back musculature. Yeah, I feel that in my hams too when I do that. Right? Yeah. Again, we're going far beyond what our muscles are capable of. We showed you what the active range of motion looked like when we did the, uh, the activation technique. Because yep. if the hip is getting tilted down from the tension of that quad, you're not stabilized through your hips. You're going into the lower back. You're going to feel issues in the knee and the lower back. So okay. let's not do that. Make it smaller. Smaller and slower is always better especially in regards to this type of work, okay? So let's go ahead and push through the heel, lift the knee up, breathe in, and then come down to a count of four. So the time under tension for these things, two up, four down, try not to rest at the bottom, and once again, we're gonna go through about 20 repetitions on each leg. You can do upwards of two sets on either side of the body, okay? Just remember, you're gonna have to go through the entire cycle before you hit the other side. So he's gonna really actively try to get his oblique to fire on that side to hold the pelvis neutral as he pushes through that knee. Now if you guys are dominant in your external rotators like a lot of us are, the knee's going to want to travel outward as you push up. Don't let that happen. Keep it tracking inside your hip line. So if you feel your hip bone on that side of the pelvis, make sure that the knee stays right, right just inside of it. So that would hopefully overload the gluteals. You'll notice that your core is going to start fatiguing. Your hamstrings are going to start kicking in. You may want to deviate out with that knee placement. All of that, if it happens at all, stop. You've done the work. The glute's tired. You don't need to do more. The goal of overload or fatigue is to bring the muscle that we're trying to target to a momentary state of fatigue so that then the body will develop and adapt. Keep it under control. Keep it precise. Keep it consistent. That's all you need to do. All right. Cool. Sounds you good. feeling it? I'm tired. My foot's uh, kicking. Good. All right. Well, let's do the other side. And there it is, guys. All right. So that brings us to the end of our Design to Move series on quad dominance and knee pain. We got through a lot of stuff today. Remember, we first inhibited the muscle and used soft tissue release techniques that broke open these collagen cross bindings and helped our muscle fibers to get long. Right? We did that before we stretched. We went through a neuromuscular stretching protocol. We tricked the nervous system into lengthening these muscle fibers and then get deeper and deeper ranges of motion. Mm -hmm. Then we targeted the backside of our body, the gluteals, to get those things to get stronger in relationship to the quad because they both work like sliding filaments around your pelvis. Gotcha. Right? Got yeah. that stronger through an activation technique. Yep. As soon as we were done with that, we put it into a stability position to teach the central nervous system how to imprint this on your nervous system all the time. Okay. And finally, we overloaded the glute by putting it into just a basic global movement pattern, teaching it how to get stronger and overload it so that we can maintain that position all the time and the relationships start to, to equal themselves out over 
period of time. Okay, sounds okay? good. Awesome. So remember, if you guys have questions, feel free to reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Each week we do bring you a new one of these series describing some type of distortion pattern and how to remediate it and clean it up. So make sure to keep your eyes out for that. And if you like it, you can subscribe to our channel and we'll get you an email out each week to remind you when we post a new video series. Sweet. Cool. Awesome. All right, guys, remember your body is designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you next week for our next episode on whatever it is we choose to do.